introduction, I'm honored to be here. Um, the title of this talk is called Relative Positioning. This is um, also kind of part of, part of a larger uh, body of research that I've been investigating over the last year. Uh, I have a much longer paper, uh, but I think today I am going to do something a little bit more informal and just simply kind of read the abstract and then get into some of the work, if that's okay. So relative positioning. How we see and understand the world is directly affected by our position in it. Constellations are simply the result of cognitive alignments related to our location in the universe. The horizon or sunset is simply a visual construct based on proximity and time. It is possible to harness the power of position through anamorphic projection and perspectival techniques in determining the space where one can engage in a new architectural experience. Architectural illusion and perspectival deceptions have been investigated since antiquity in order to alter the perception of a given space. From the early Renaissance, these techniques have been used primarily in illusionary or optical manner and have never been directed at the creation of physical space. Specific, specifically, anamorphic projection techniques in architecture offer the potential to create a dynamic spatial experience that are three-dimensional and go beyond simple projections, more than images and shapes simply painted onto an architectural surface. By using this process to make space a reading of space emerges that is both real and perceived. The forms exist in three dimensions. They are real and physical, but are perceived via procession and emergent perceptions. Much like the diagonal movement through Villas of Wild, or the emergent space created by Maticrux's cut, views and alignments seek to add value, a new something, a new reading of the space, a perceptual shift. This is a new form of collage. So essentially, um, what I've been trying to do with the, um, this uh, research with relative positioning is how to move an understanding of anamorphic uh, projection and using kind of perspectival techniques uh, in an architectural way. So how do we go past simple 2D projections uh, similar to this, which is Felice Barini or uh, George Bruce, who did a similar effect using anamorphosis, but doing it in a kind of sculptural way. So the question was, how could I bring it into an architectural reality? Um, the first kind of opportunity I had to do this was invited to a group show in Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, I was very limited by the space. So if I was going to do something three-dimensional, I was not able to do it here, both because of the space and the budget for the show. So how could I do something two-dimensional to bring it past where Barini and any number of people um, have taken these kind of anamorphic um, projects? Similar to the street art that you showed in your uh, first presentation. How do you move it past that? Um, in, this, in this project, on the left is a slide of uh, the same space. Um, I decided to use uh, reflective tape. So on the left, you'll see that the space is, it doesn't look like anything's in the hallway. Um, those lines are on the slide on the, on the left, but they only are accessed through the flash in your uh, iPhone or camera. So if you take a flash, this drawing appears on the wall, and this drawing is set up with six very particular points of anamorphic uh, views, the perceived view. So as you go through the space, these drawings do not show up until you actually take the photograph. Two machine guns on the right at a very particular vantage point in the um, staircase and a detail on the left of the actual uh, tape itself. So this was a shot of the show. Uh, this is supposed to be from one of the vantage points. I haven't gotten uh, the professional photography back yet, but this is you, know, you can see the beginning of the perfect uh, square or the circle, and then as you move off the vantage point, uh, looking down the staircase, you get this. So that was a two-dimensional way of, of, kind of for me, um, trying to wrap my mind around what could happen three-dimensionally. So uh, I started this journey with a series of um, diagrams. So in all of the diagrams that you're going to see uh, in the subsequent slides, they're all set up in the same way. So 
this particular part of the um, slide is the privilege point of view. Uh, the diagram axon on the bottom describes that point of view, and then you have the plan and the elevation. So it's always set up where you have uh, the point of view uh, of the viewer, you have the uh, viewport, the projection plane, and the focal plane. So each one of these slides, too, as I've, I've kind of narrowed it down to a series of operations that could then be combined to create architectural space. Uh, the first one of these would be uh, what I'm calling scale. So this is the privileged point of view, the axon, the plan, and the elevation again. So you get this sense that there is this uh, floating rectangle in space, but the reality is something much different. You could cut the space. So again, projecting a circle through the space that then starts to control a series of cuts in the space. And this is the, the point of view from off of the privilege point. Physically cutting the space. then actually manifesting that cone. So once that cone is projected from the viewer, you can take bits and pieces of that cone to begin to construct a, an architectural space. An idea of cloaking. So again, from the point of view, can you make the space, can you make a wall in the space seem to disappear by taking and projecting the lines of the perspective through the actual space? So the wall is here, and this line, and this line are projected through the space with a perceived opening. So then you can see the reality in that moment. And then also using um, kind of illusionistic ideas. So this one would be uh, what I'm determining is a mirror. So again, kind of taking a wall and perceiving that there's a mirror in place, but the reality is much different. I'm going to read a little bit more, but that's okay with you. So forms are either projected to the point of the viewer, or objects within the space are positioned along and within the perspectival cone, which causes a change in scale, and depending on the point of view, a shift in relation. By using both of these methods, forms come into alignment as one moves closer to the focal point. Since the spaces created have multiple focal points, and forms might share multiple foci, the space is constantly vibrating based on the viewer's proximity to the focal point, a visual flipping or slippage. Here the form is a product of spatial shifts and is born from the focal point. This is not a traditional formalist endeavor, but rather the form is a direct result of relative position. One no longer views the form as a holistic object, but instead experiences the space as a collection of cinematic moments, serial form. The architecture is developed from within as a constructed field of view. The objects of form are constantly changing according to the adjacencies of other formal objects and the point of view of the observer. In this sense, both physical and virtual object forms are created that allow for a new experience of the space. This is a new form of collage, as I said before. For perceiving the alignment of determined form and the subsequent disjunction of that form, one is able to participate in the spatial experience rather than simply viewing it. So that's a way for me to kind of take it out of just the purely uh, two-dimensional act of view. In this sense, movement through the space is animated and the subject-object relationship is questioned. It enables one to be an active participant within the space forming and conveying a sense of sensation that a static space cannot. The apparent flattening of space through material qualities and the formal techniques of relative positioning make it possible for a duality of visual perception to occur. These tensions of object qualities elicit a spatial ambiguity that puts pressure on the real and opens up a world of wonder and excitement. We become participants in this new environment. Here it is okay to question where illusion is physical 
and ambiguity is desired. Um, this is a, uh, I, I didn't have the, uh, the real videos of this, so I apologize for the quality of the video. But this is one of the uh, kind of combination of several of those techniques. So this is one of the false forms. So as we enter the space, we see um, this floating cube, but the reality is much different. So as we move off of this view, you can see the construct begins to create this, um, uh, this formal kind of quality in space. This is also dependent on the type of material. that you use. So the same type of idea with a certain set of material qualities can have a much different effect. Again, sorry about the quality of the video. Space, um, you know, circulation in space, whether it's stairs, ramps, etc. 
it's, it's because of those architectural limits that make this possible, that make relative positioning not only, uh, I think, exciting for me, um, but I think it's fairly new. Uh, it's a new approach that, um, obviously, I have not grasped yet in, in, in totality, but it's something that I'm hoping will drive a lot of my work.